Okay, so I want to start this video by letting you guys know that this video is going to be a lot of information packed into one short-ish kind of video just because I wanted this video to be a little bit more step-by-step -step than my last wedding dress video was so you guys can actually make this dress with me if you're interested in making this dress. Or you can see how I make dresses and order a dress from me. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to push it, push it, but you know, it's all right. Um, anyway, this is our design. I've ventured a little bit from the original dress from um, Maggie Sotero. I used her seaming here in the front, but instead of her V neckline, um, I did more of a plunging sweetheart neckline and I decided to use um, I decided to use spaghetti, beaded spaghetti straps instead of the thicker bias binding kind of straps that she has. I also changed this center back panel here to an illusion, um, illusion panel. And then uh, I changed this train here. Now I have a separate train piece here. And I've done that so I can save myself on fabric and because I thought it looks nice. I also um, have a waistline seam here to save myself on fabric. And um, I thought it'd be okay because it's gonna be disguised by the uh, beaded belt. So to complete the stretch, you're going to need six yards of the face fabric, six yards of lining, six yards of underlining, uh, if you choose to underline, which I highly recommend that you do, two yards of interfacing, one yard of illusion fabric, and two yards of the beaded trim. You're also gonna need some notions. You're going to need some matching thread, some button loops. You're also going to need the cover buttons. Don't get the already covered buttons, get the cover button kit. Uh, get it in about a hundred set because this is a lot of buttons and I doubt we're gonna use a hundred, but just to be safe, get a, the hundred set. I think to get the set of a hundred of the kit that you cover yourself, it's like 14, $15, so it's not much. And I want, uh, I am getting the, the ones that I cover myself. Actually, I have them here this kind of thing to where you cover it yourself. It has everything you need inside of it so that I can cover it with the same fabric that I'm making the dress from. You're also going to need uh, eight millimeter and 12 mil uh, eight millimeter and 12 millimeter wriggling boning. You're going to need, uh, you could also use spiral steel boning, which I probably will put in the uh, princess seams just because this dress is going to be my size and I'm a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm between a 14 at the top and an 18 uh, at the bottom uh, in my hip line. You're also going to need a zipper. I like to use these uh, really long zippers. I have one here right here. I get these on Etsy. Um, you know, they're really long and they come in packs of 12. And these zippers are actually really good. These zippers are way better than, than the ones at Joann's. The one, every time I get a zipper from Joann's, um, after a while from zipping it up and down, it starts to, one of the, the, it, the teeth start to kind of separate and it, it won't let me zip it up anymore. I've never had the problem with these zippers and they sell them in packs of 12 in all different kinds of colors. So I really recommend you guys get these kind of zippers. Or um, if you guys don't have any problem with the zippers you're getting, then go ahead and uh, get a zipper like that, a really long one. You're going to need some hand sewing needles. I like, uh, these hand sewing needles, um, they're kind of thick, but it has a, a big eye. It's really good. It's not really bendable. I love these ones. I usually use the one that's a little bit longer than this. I love these ones for basing and doing any kind of handwork that uh, doesn't need to be hidden or, you know, if your fabric isn't really forgiving, I wouldn't use this one, but I would use a thinner one, but I love this one. Uh, I, you also need a blunt needle. I don't, I can't find mine right now, but a blunt needle for turning out your loops for the straps, or you could use a really small safety pin. That may not fit, unless you have a really tiny one. One of those little baby um, safety pins or a loop turner. And a hook and eye for the top of the zipper here. I also wanted to talk about the construction of this dress because this dress, even though it is simple, it the construction of it is quite uh, complicated. So I wanted to talk about it. Uh, this illusion panel right here will be hand sewn to the lining. I don't want to sew it here to my face because if I sew it to the face, they're gonna be, it's gonna be too much tension and it won't lay flat. Also this um, illusion panel here in the back will also be sewn down 
hand sewn down to the lining as well sort of uh in between the layer in between the layers if you if you will it'll be sewn down there so that it won't have the tension when i created my mock-up when i machined it i noticed that there was quite a bit of tension here so i may either machine it with a low tension on my sewing machine or hand sew it in just so there's not a lot of tension here i'm thinking about doing an invisible zipper and have it kind of lapped over with the buttons or it may have the button and loop closure i'm not sure exactly we'll get to that when we get there the skirt will have a separate zipper. So the illusion panel will button by itself and then the skirt will have a, a separate zipper and the buttons will be kind of lapped over the zipper and the buttons will go all the way down. So that's how the back will be constructed. The dress will be three layers in total. It'll have its face, it'll have an underlining which will be on the face and then it'll have a lining. I'm going to do the corset of the gown, uh, the boning of the gown onto the lining, the same as last time, but I'll be doing it a little bit different this time. Also the dress uh, will have a built-in corset uh, on the interior of it. And I snatch me in here in the stomach area. And then the bottom will have a little bit of horse hair to keep that uh, nice and weighed down and flat. So uh, now that we have an overview of the dress and what we're going to be making and blah, 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 uh, let's go ahead and start drafting the pattern. I know I told you kind of generally what we're going to need, but I will be describing um, in detail the fabrics that I suggest you use and the fabrics that I'm yes. going to use. Uh, I am starting this, pat this tutorial assuming that you guys already have a bodice block, uh, a bodice block and a skirt block. If you don't have both of those, I'll link some videos up here uh, for you guys to go ahead and check out and create your bodice blocks and come back. You could also use an already made pattern like this, like I showed in my last. This is the McCall's uh, 7320. This is a good pattern for any kind of um, mermaid dress. It'll It's a perfect pattern to get the shape. And she also has a, well, it's supposed to be an illusion panel up here um, that you could use to get the sizing off of it uh, and everything. It's it's a really good starting point. But I want to, um, I'm assuming everyone watching this has the knowledge to draft patterns. So I want to start with a pattern that is actually drafted from scratch instead of a already made pattern like I did in my last video. I'm going to start by deciding how low I want my plunging neckline to be and I decided about eight centimeters below my bust line so I'm going to go ahead and mark that and then I'm going to square up eight centimeters from my apex there on my bust line and I'm going to draw a line there as well and instead of having my princess seam settle right on my bust line or well, in line with my apex I want to move it over about six centimeters towards my arms, uh, my armhole area. So I'm gonna draw a six centimeter line there. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect that line to my armhole. I decided that I want mine to kind of be a little bit lower. So I'm gonna connect it to my bust line at the side seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off the, uh, sweetheart, the sweetheart portion of the neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a French curve and finish that off. Even though this is together, once you cut this out and you make this, uh, once this part goes away, you're going to need to add uh, kind of a, a dark shape here because you're going to need it to curve around your bust area. It's not going to be straight like it would be if you're wearing, if you're making a bigger kind of top. So to account for that, I'm going to take away about, let's start with about a half a centimeter on either side. I hope I'm being really clear with the instruction on this one. I want to make sure that everyone uh, can do it even if you're a little bit more of a beginner. And also please don't forget to give this video a like. It helps me and it also helps YouTube uh, be able to offer my videos to more DIYers like yourself. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take a blank piece of paper. All right. So now that I have it and I can actually see through to where my bust line is, so that's the first thing I'm going to go ahead and draw and I'm going to make sure that I have my ruler based off a straight edge here and I'm going to draw in my bust line. Sorry, you guys hear Captain Crazy out there. I wanted this video to be more of a talking video than a voiceover because I wanted to be more personal with you guys. Um, so excuse the background noise of the kids, guys. Please forgive me. One day I'll stay up late enough to record after they're sleeping, but I, I can't. I don't know when we're going to be able to count on that day, y'all. Okay, so I have my bust line drawn in here. I think I want my back to, to, pre, to be pretty much straight on my bust line. So I'm going to use my bust line as a guide for the back. Um, I want it to be pretty angular because we have a lot of angular seams in this dress, and I think it'll look nice. So I'm going to copy out the side seam. And the center front. Well, in this case, it'll be the center back. Now we have our whole back piece, but we're not doing a whole back piece. We're going to have an illusion panel here and we're gonna have a little bit of the face fabric. So now our next, job, our next job is to measure out how much of face we wanna have and how much illusion, illusion we wanna have. And I think I chose three inches, but let me go make sure. Let me measure, make sure. Yep, for doodles, we ch I chose three inches. So I'm gonna measure out three inches. And I'm sorry, I keep going inches to centimeters. Um, it's just the way I work. Uh, and I hope that doesn't bother you guys. If it does, please let me know and I will use either or. And this will be our side front panel and all of this will be illusion and we'll have to deal with that later. But now that I have my uh, back piece is the same as my front. Now we can go ahead and start working back on the front. I was wondering the other day how many of you guys actually watch to the end um, and see the videos of me and my family being a little bit silly and a little bit crazy. Comment down below and let me know if you guys have seen those videos at the, or the little clips at the end and let me know if you guys like them or not. I've been pretty apprehensive uh, about having my kids here on my channel just because, um, you know, eventually, I'm not saying I reach a lot of people now, but eventually I will reach a lot of people. Um, and I just don't want my kids to kind of be in the middle of that. But I've slowly, with the peer pressure from the kids, I've slowly been letting them be in more and more of my videos. So let me know, uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Now it's time to start altering the front pieces. I'm not gonna go with specific measurements because every measure, everybody's body is different. But I will say what you wanna do is you wanna measure out your bust and your waistline on the pattern pieces. And then you want to compare those measurements to the measurements that you've taken off of your body. And if they're more or less, you want to adjust the half pattern piece um, accordingly. So with mine on my bust line, I need to add an inch and a half to half the pattern because we're working with halves. Uh, I need to add an inch and a half so uh, to my bust line. So I ended up adding three quarters of an inch to each side of the princess seam. And then for my waistline, I needed to add um, another, what was it? Not an inch, an inch and three quarters. So I ended up adding seven eighths of an inch to both sides of my princess seam. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please leave your questions down below. And I also just remembered that I forgot to add my dart to my back piece, which is important. You don't want to miss that. So I'm going to go ahead and add my dart now. And then I'm going to remove that dart. The dart is about an inch and an eighth. So I'm taking an inch and an eighth from the top and the bottom line, and I'm just squaring that up, removing the fullness from that dart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure to see how much I have, and I still need to remove one more inch from the back there. So I'm gonna remove another inch and square that line down as well.
and I'm going to go ahead and retrace the center back piece, that piece that'll be the illusion panel. I'm tracing that onto a clean piece of paper. And I'm not going to add any seam allowances because the illusion fabric stretches. Now that I have my back pieces finished, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the front pieces. So I'm just adding those same amounts that we uh, noted on the pattern pieces. Make sure to square your bust line and your waistline over to make sure that you're adding the amount that you need in the right areas. and you do the same exact thing for the other side. Before I do a quick mock-up on the bodice piece, I just wanna kill two birds in one stone. So I actually wanna go ahead and quickly show you guys how to make the, um, the skirt portion of the dress, just so when you guys do the mock-up, you can do the mock-up together, you can actually sew it together as a dress and fit it as a dress. So I have my front and back um, skirt blocks here. And pretty much you would do the same thing as you uh, do um, with the top. So I would find my dart leg, which is here, and then I would start my princess seam here, pass it through the point of the dart, and then take it straight down. And that's how you create the princess seams for the uh, front and back skirt block, uh, it should already fit you, um, so you shouldn't have a problem there. And for the skirt portion, I actually don't pattern the skirt portion just because it'll make it'll be too much paper. So what I usually do is I cut it, I cut the portions of the train, the mermaid part of the skirt out when I'm cutting out the actual fabric, I measure it out that way. So that'll be done when we're actually cutting out the dress. So this is the mock-up. It fits me uh, pretty nice. It's a little bit loose and I'm okay with that because this dress is gonna have quite a few layers. So I need that ease to fit the layers in. I'm showing you my bust line here, how it looks kind of weird. And this is actually a mock-up uh, that I use a different pattern uh, for. So the pattern that we drafted just earlier won't have this issue. And look, I noticed the back is also uh, up a little bit more, so I have to figure out how to fix that issue as well. Okay, so I have the mock-up made up. Excuse my dress form, she's like a little misshapen in the bust area, but it does the trick. And she's also a little bit bigger than me, but she does the trick. Anyway, so I made the mock-up. I had to hand sew the whole thing because I didn't have enough thread for my machine, which is irritating, I didn't feel like going to the store. So I hand sewed the whole mock-up and that took some time, but here it is. I can already see some adjustments that needs to be made. On the picture of the uh, Maggie Zotero dress, her neckline was a little bit more uh, straight. Um, and this one's a little bit more rounded and I actually like it a little bit more rounded. I think it'll be uh, better suited to my body type than having a, a V-neck kind of shape. I hand basted this in because on the actual dress, this will be hand basted 
or hand sewn down to the lining and not the face. I almost forgot to say something about this middle panel piece. Um, it's not a pattern piece for it. I didn't have to draft it. All it is pretty much is a rectangle piece that I just attached to the back. So you guys don't have to work, uh, worry about that. All you have to do is worry about just cutting two layers of illusion. That's a rectangle to put here and hand basting it to your seam allowance here at the neckline. I'm having some issues here with my bust curve. You can't really tell on the dress, well, it looks horrible on the dress form, but it looks worse on me because it fits my bust curve, fits my bust here, and then it's kind of a little bit too big there. And then when it gets down to this part, it's like flattening out, and then it's fine at the under bust. So I'm gonna have to rework this whole bust curve, and I'll do that when I take it back to paper. This is the train. I love how long it is. I think I measured 75 inches from the, excuse my overflowing scrap box, but um, 75 inches from the waistline, so it's, it's a pretty long train. I have to make some corrections here. I'm not sure what happened with my calculations there, but obviously my math was some kind of wrong. So I'm going to connect the back here over like that. And it's like that on both sides. And then I'm also having that issue not so much here, so this will be a quick fix. I'm gonna be extending the back piece. Stop, Leah. I'm gonna be extending the back piece to fit onto the front piece, because I like the length of the front piece. And then, this is my center front and my side front panels, also having that issue. So I'm going to extend the side front panel to meet the, the center front. But all in all, I think it, it looks good. I tried it on and it fits good. I may insert some clips of me wearing it. Uh, I'm not sure where my confidence level is gonna be about that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I like the shape here at the bottom. The best part is the back. Like I said, this dress form is too big for me, so it's not closing in the back, but um, it's equal distances from the center back, so it should be fine. Um, so the, there's an illusion back panel that I have a zipper on just to make it easier for me to close by myself, but it will be closed by buttons, like buttons and loops. And then I have a separate closure for the back of the skirt, which we closed by zipper, not this far down. It's cl being closed super far down. I'll probably stop it under my butt. Um, yeah, I had to use two layers of tulle here and I stay stitched the top and the bottom just so um, it's not stretching out too much when I'm putting it on this dress form that's bigger than me because I need to get the exact shape. And this again, right now it's sewn, machine sewn. Is this machine sewn? Yeah, actually I had enough throw it to machine sew this. This is machine sewn to the bodice pieces, but it actually will be hand sewn to the um, to the lining on the actual dress to reduce this tension that I'm getting here. And I think I also need to extend, even though it was a perfect rectangle, I'm not sure if it's because the dress form is bigger than me, but I think I need to extend this bit here. And, and obviously it's not going to need a seam allowance because it's not being attached to anything and it doesn't need to be finished because it'll be tool. And I'm gonna be using a nice illusion tool for this. Right now I'm just using a, a plain tool, but the tool for the gown will actually be a nice illusion tool that I got from um, BJ's Fabrics. Uh, it's, it, I think it's a shop in New York, but I got it online. So I think it's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the seam lines on it. I wanted to fit it like this first because the lining is gonna be just a plain princess seam. Now that I have it all fit, I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing the seam lines on it. And yes, before be our fans, thank you for thank you for subscribing and succeed my mom's videos. And I really I really like it. I really because like you, you actually gets